Ukraine, it has claimed yet another high-profile strike, and that is against Russia's Black Sea fleet, a Russian port city on the Black Sea. Ukraine said that they hit the Russian ship with a drone. Yes, a single drone did the damage. On Thursday, the Ukrainian military intelligence said that its special forces struck a Russian vessel. A Russian warship hit without warning, burned in the middle of the Black Sea. No missiles were launched. No planes circled overhead. Instead, a small, silent craft closed the gap and detonated 320 kilograms of explosives at point-blank range. You're about to see how Ukraine has rewritten the naval rulebook with a weapon many describe as a waterborne cruise missile. The question is simple. How do you defend your fleet when the enemy doesn't even need ships to sink yours? Before we move on, I'd like to ask you a small favor. If you appreciate this content, Please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Over 98% of you watch the videos without subscribing. It costs you nothing, but it makes a huge difference to us. So, did you click the subscribe button? Great, thank you so much. Now back to the video. Russia's Black Sea Fleet once cruised the coast like it was their private highway. Columns of gray hulls pushed patrol routes close to Ukrainian shores, launching missiles or escorting landing ships and nothing stood in their way. On paper, Ukraine had no counter. The balance was fixed, or at least it looked that way. Ukraine, it has claimed yet another high-profile strike, and that is against Russia's Black Sea fleet. The vessel in question is no ordinary target. It is reportedly one of only four in Russia's entire fleet, commissioned in 2015. But then one shift changed everything. A fleet that once moved with near total freedom was suddenly forced to treat every shadow on the water like a possible threat. The hunted had become the hunter. That sense of dominance had been forged through scale. Russia kept heavy landing ships to move troops and armor, fast patrol craft to screen them, and missile systems able to unleash salvos across hundreds of kilometers. For decades, this kind of navy gave Moscow leverage over its neighbors. A destroyer or cruiser didn't just carry weapons, it projected intimidation. A Russian port city on the Black Sea. Ukraine said that they hit the Russian ship with a drone. Yes, a single drone did the damage. Ukraine's military agency also identified the target as an MPSV-07 multi-purpose ship. The drone targeted the vessel's bridge destroying its navigation and communication systems and knocking out its electronic surveillance equipment. Naval artillery, radar nets, air defense bubbles, and cruise missile batteries stitched together a picture of control. Even without firing a shot, that arsenal made it clear who owned the sea lanes. Ukraine, in contrast, started this war without a real fleet. The loss of many surface combatants left them stripped of all but coastal patrol boats and shore-based missile batteries. From a traditional perspective, that's a crippling deficiency. You can't challenge a carrier with a cutter. You can't break a blockade with inflatable dinghies. Commanders on both sides knew the math, and the math seemed absolute. No navy means no sovereignty at sea. Without sovereignty, you bend to the one that has it. That expectation framed the first months of war. Russian officers calculated their safety based on centuries-old assumptions. Sea power belongs to whoever has the larger hulls, the thicker armor, the bigger guns. In this view, sea dominance looked like a permanent fixture of the battlefield. The imbalance was so sharp that few even considered alternatives. Ukraine's military intelligence, the HUR, said its special forces struck and disabled the high-value vessel on September 10th. At the time of the attack, the Russian vessel had been carrying out electronic reconnaissance and uh, patrolling the approaches. Ukraine says that the Russian ship was forced out of service and will now require expensive repairs. Yet warfare punishes predictability and the cracks were already forming under the surface. The answer did not arrive as another frigate or as hidden submarines. It arrived in something far less obvious, a craft the size of a racing boat, built not for patrol but for ramming speed. Unlike a warship with a crew, radar, and heavy weapons, this vessel moved fast, carried only one payload, and existed for one task. Picture a guided cruise missile that floats instead of flies. It's designed to skim the surface, race to contact, and detonate against steel. 
That weapon came to be called the Mora V5. The Mora V5 specs are blunt but effective. Its thrust drives it past 70 knots. Ukraine says the attack was carried out with a domestically manufactured combat drone, damaging the ship's electronic warfare system. On Thursday, the Ukrainian military intelligence said that its special forces struck a Russian vessel, where Moscow has redeployed much of its fleet after repeated Ukrainian strikes in occupied Crimea. Faster than many patrol boats can react. The hull, shaped low and sharp, reduces reflection on radar screens. Its warhead carries a charge of 320 kilograms, enough to tear open thick plating or rupture entire compartments. You could call it a boat, but looking at it through a tactical lens, it behaves more like a mobile torpedo with intelligence on board. It doesn't depend on a launch tube. It gets steered, adjusted, guided, and it closes distance with frightening speed. The strength is not only speed but silence. Radar systems face a blind spot at the waterline because the sea itself creates constant noise. Waves scatter reflections, clutter signals, and create false returns. Deep targets stand out. Air threats are tracked by specialized sensors. But surface skimming drones blend in with the ocean's noise. Operators staring at consoles would see nothing unusual until the moment it was far too late. The real estate between whitecaps became a cloak. For Russian crews, this presented the most dangerous trap. Training emphasized missiles streaking in from the sky or submarines lurking beneath the waves. Watchstanders swept their eyes upward, searching for silhouettes against clouds or contrails from jets. They watched broad arcs on the horizon where enemy frigates might appear. What they didn't watch with the same discipline was the ripple at sea level, half hidden by foam. And that is exactly where the threat emerged, unseen until the impact. This is the story of how entire crews faced a weapon they weren't conditioned to expect. It wasn't a plane, a missile, or a fleet. It was a disposable craft worth a tiny fraction of what it destroyed. And in live combat, it showed its power by wiping a Russian vessel off the map in seconds. The proof was not theory, but an explosion seen across the Black Sea. One strike that reshaped naval planning overnight. One expendable craft exposed the flaw in fleets built on billion-dollar hulls. The doctrine of mass and armor, once unshakable, collapsed in the face of a fast, disposable strike that rewrote the balance at sea in real time. Naval warfare no longer pivots only on destroyers, carriers, and subs. It now includes machines the size of speedboats with the punch of cruise missiles. What would you do to defend against a fleet that doesn't sail traditional ships? Comment your choice below and subscribe to join a community dissecting how new technology is changing every battlefield, one strike at a time.